The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, this is a recorded version uh, of the webinar. Um, we had some difficulties uh, in that uh, it seemed my screen had frozen and, uh, and it wasn't being broadcast, so I do apologize for that. Um, anyone who didn't see the webinar previously, uh, my name is Mark, and for those who don't know me, I'm the Integration Manager at AIT. Uh, and I've been working with Salto for almost six years now. Today's webinar is aimed at showing the new space software from Salto and uh, to highlight some of the key features that are available in it. Whether you're new to Salto or you have an existing system utilizing the old RW ProAccess software, I hope you'll find the next half an hour useful. So first and foremost, uh, I hope you can hear me and I hope also this time you can see my screen. Um, Due to the number of people uh, in this webinar, uh, we'll be running the session in listen-only mode. And if you have any questions, uh, please note them down. Uh, as I say, this is a recording, so if you just want to email them into us uh, after, the, after you've watched the presentation, um, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll answer them then. Uh, any questions are treated anonymously. Uh, alternatively, we can take individual in-depth discussions uh, that may be needed offline. So I can skip through these bits. Okay, so today's webinar, uh, there's quite a lot that I'll be covering, um, but to make things as simple as possible, I'll be breaking it down to the following areas. Uh, we'll be looking at the new software interface. Uh, it's significantly different, and there's a few things you'll need to know about how it works. Uh, along with the revised software, there's some new hardware, which I'll quickly be running through and showing how it differs to the old equipment. There's also a quick look at the mobile platform, uh, NFC and BLE and our options with the equipment, so that mobile phones can be utilised for unlocking doors. The licensing has changed significantly in the space platform, so I'll be looking at some of the options available and the various software additions. And then finally, I'll be running a quick demonstration of the software interface so you can get a feel for how it works and also draw some similarities to previous software versions for those who are familiar with Salto already. So the biggest news about space is the move from a client application to web-based management. This has the advantage of making the solution much more portable and accessible and simplifying deployment. From an installation perspective, there is now only one installer to run, and all the necessary configuration steps are carried out during installation. Furthermore, with the latest release of the Space software, all the management of service components, such as live monitoring, roll call, etc., is also managed through the browser. At the moment, uh, users will require Silverlight and Internet Explorer to be available for the management interface. Salto are working hard to remove these dependencies and make the system cross-browser compatible, and rely purely on HTML5 for the interface. Uh, we're yet to find out whether this uh, will make the system Mac compatible, um, but certainly for day-to-day -day management, that should be fine. Uh, however, in order to support USB peripherals, users are required to download and install a small utility to handle the communications. Uh, Ethernet encoders should work without issue, so if you've got uh, thin clients, uh, then uh, an Ethernet encoder for managing the cards is, uh, is a great solution for that. Uh, so for those of you who are already familiar with the older software, uh, you should recognize this screen. Uh, it's the welcoming grey tones of uh, RW Pro Access. Um, uh, and actually, apart from looking a little dated now, the software works absolutely fine. Uh, it was pretty robust, uh, quick to navigate, and uh, it did everything you needed to do when you're managing the system. Uh, however, times have changed, and the first thing you will see after logging into space uh, is this screen. Uh, so the banner at the top, uh, gives you your uh, your currently logged in user, any system notifications, uh, there's a log out button and, uh, and some information and help screens. Um, we've also got access uh, to all the menu options, so um, we've got our, our various components of the system uh, and there's a grid of tiles uh, for quick access to common settings and tasks. Uh, you'll also notice, uh, for those uh, who are familiar with Salto already, there's been some changes to the terminologies. Um, so doors are now referred to as access points, uh, users are referred to as card holders, and some of the other options have been grouped together uh, to declutter the screen. The, uh, the old user list uh, has also had a refresh uh, to look much less cluttered, and uh, those familiar with the quirks of the old search facility um, in Salto uh, will be pleased to hear that Space has much improved filtering capabilities, which I'll be demonstrating uh, towards the end of the presentation. So I'll very quickly go through the menu items. Uh, most of these are very similar to previous software uh, versions, but uh, some of them have got different names now. So in the access points menu, we can manage doors, lockers, and rooms. Doors work in exactly the same way as they always have done, and they represent a handle or a powered control unit. 
Uh, lockers uh, work slightly differently to doors and they can be configured to be freely assigned to a user so you can walk up to an empty one, swap your card and allocate it to you uh, or they can be uh, pre-assigned to a named individual. Uh, rooms uh, is used in a hotel environment uh, and they differ slightly to doors though fundamentally they are the same thing um, but they can be easily assigned to a user on a temporary basis. Zones are still groups of doors uh, which typically have similar access rights such as uh, meeting rooms, uh, comms rooms. Um, often people will treat zones as physical areas but sometimes it pays to zone the doors logically. Um, so you might have say staff doors, student doors, uh, IT suite doors, things like that. Um, we've then got locations. Uh, so locations are used to group large numbers of doors and zones together. Uh, for example, uh, a company maybe with offices spread across the country might have a location configured for each of its buildings in different cities. And then functions uh, is a feature which allows the grouping of doors across different locations. So for example, you might uh, want to group all of the front doors or main entrances together um, at, at different sites in order to grant users uh, who have got different base offices to all be able to get access uh, to the front doors at uh, different buildings. Um, other settings are the same as they always have been, so we've got outputs for controlling additional relays, uh, for example with a timer or a lift. Uh, we've got lockdown uh, for quickly securing areas, um, limited occupancy, um, which is useful in car parks and places like that and then roll call for getting a list of users uh, within an area and finally we can configure uh, the scheduling uh, of locks and outputs like we always have been able to do. Moving into the card holders menu, uh, these are split into three categories, so we've got users, visitors and guests. Uh, so users are the same as they've always been, uh, they're your staff, your students uh, or your tenants. Uh, we've got visitors which are temporary users who only require access for a short time uh, with predefined access rights such as a, a contractor or, or maintenance personnel. And then we've got guests uh, and that uh, relates to the hotel functionality. Uh, so each of those users can have predefined access levels uh, which dictates where they can go and during what times. Uh, we've still got the ability to find groups uh, for limited occupancy and calendars for the card holders as well. We've got the keys uh, menu which is the same as it always has been um, but this just enables the management of cards within the browser now rather than uh, within the application. Um, the monitoring menu brings a lot of the service components into the browser so previously uh, the communication with the service or real-time elements had to be performed via a separate application including uh, the very first release of space. This is all now integrated into the browser to allow door control and monitoring um, as well as querying the audit trail to see where people have been. We've got uh, a menu for various hotel functionality, uh, most of which is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, things like one-shot keys are, are single-use cards which will get someone into a room once um, and then expire. So that might be useful, say, um, for a meeting room where you just want them to go in uh, at their allocated time um, and then, then that's it. They can't, uh, they can't get access to, uh, to any other doors after that. Uh, we've got the tools menu now and uh, this gives us access to some of the integration settings for importing and exporting data um, as well as very basic card printing within the software. And then finally the system menu which gives access to the system auditor which logs uh, any changes that are made in the software. Um, we've got the uh, operators and uh, operator groups we can define the access rights. Um, we've got various other settings including the, uh, the PPD menu there for, uh, for doing door programming and, and managing the Salto network. So with the new software Salto has released new hardware too uh, which builds upon the existing uh, equipment in the CU5000 range. So uh, what's nice now is that a single control unit can now offer support for two completely independent doors uh, as well as providing four relay outputs instead of two. Um, we've also got more inputs now which are configurable so we can have office mode switches connected to provide this facility um, without the need to uh, hold the door uh, and swipe a card. So in a classroom this might be really useful where you could go into the, the teacher could go into the room and then once they're in the room they could just press a switch and that would leave the door uh, open behind them. Um, We've also got, um, uh, coming up soon, uh, a PoE version of the control unit um, which will enable you to, uh, to, to power the CU4000 uh, uh, from a network and not require a separate power supply. Um, this will only power the control unit and not any lock mechanisms just because of the current draw. Uh, we, we, we can't uh, pull that much current down, uh, down a network cable. Um, we've also got the wall readers pictured there, um, so these are now available in white and black instead of the, uh, the standard grey. 
Uh, they offer a much slicker design as well as the ability to be cabled up to 400 meters from the control unit uh, instead of the previous 100 meters. Uh, they also support the Bluetooth uh, low energy to allow smartphones to be used as keys instead of traditional cards. Um, so uh, additionally, Salto have introduced the concepts of gateways and nodes. Um, so a, a gateway behaves exactly the same as an existing uh, network control unit. Um, it's got a network port, it can control two doors. Um, but uh, what you can do with nodes is expand those control units, those gateways. Um, so I'll give you a quick example of how this architecture looks. So uh, please excuse my crude diagram. Uh, hopefully it explains uh, a little bit better than, uh, than words can. Um, but here's our traditional setup. So we've got our server uh, connected to the network, and then we've got a control unit that's also connected to the network. Um, what you can now do um, is, with the gateways, uh, exactly the same, we can have two wall readers uh, connected to a gateway, but we can then also piggyback nodes onto these to give uh, additional doors from a single network connection. Um, so um, this is really useful where you've got a, a kind of high concentration uh, of doors in an area, so say for example turnstiles, we could just provision one network connection um, and then we could daisy chain uh, the various nodes from a single gateway. Um, and that would then enable us to, to have independent control of all these turnstiles um, just with a single network connection. So it's saving cost and in, uh, in getting them installed. The offline uh, equipment has also had a refresh and the XS4 mini handles uh, are now available. These units uh, are much more compact and they simplify the installation uh, because they only require a standard handle on the inside of the door um, and everything else is on the outside. Uh, so the batteries are held uh, on the outside of the door, um, so uh, the unit requires a special tool to facilitate the removal uh, of the cover to get to those. Um, the programming is also simplified as well because the, uh, this unit uses NFC to communicate with the PPD, um, so rather than the cable needing to be plugged in. Uh, these handles can also work uh, with the new Bluetooth technology that's, uh, that I mentioned earlier, and I'll be going into a little bit more detail about that too. Um, so the, the Bluetooth technology um, is referred to as just in, um, it just uh, basically allowing a user's phone to unlock doors. Um, there is another version uh, of this called Mobile NFC, and what that enables you to do is use a phone to update a card. Um, so you can basically use your phone as an update point to, to get new access rights onto a card. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it only works with Android devices because uh, the NFC is restricted in uh, iOS phones. Um, the nice thing about uh, Just In uh, is that it works via Bluetooth, which is supported on both iOS and Android devices. So the user can present their phone against the handle so that it senses your presence, and then the door's unlocked uh, using BLE. Uh, this functionality does require the latest compatible hardware to enable support, um, but speak to us if you're interested in getting more details about this, and we can, uh, we can have a chat with you about it. Um, with our integration capabilities, mobile phone numbers can be pre-populated into the software. Uh, to enable the use of phone maybe as a temporary card solution in some environments. So Salto has uh, changed the licensing model uh, to give more options to the software rather than restricting the numbers of doors or users. Um, so all the software is now based on the same database architecture, it's all SQL based and it's all service driven meaning it can just be installed once uh, and then just left to run in the background. Uh, exactly as before, licensed purchases are one-off. Uh, they don't require a uh, annual subscription or renewal. And there are now six core software editions, uh, each adding more functionality over the last. So BASIC offers the least functionality, um, but it's still a good starting point for a small organization. Um, one of the big things with BASIC is that the management uh, of cards will be quite a manual process, so there's no automatic card assignment. You would have to uh, print a card for each user, look their record up and then encode their card uh, independently. Uh, online is the next step up, um, that allows a little bit more automation, so that will do the, uh, the issuing of cards automatically, and also gives you a lot more real-time control over your doors and the system. Uh, identity adds visitor management and basic card printing functionality. Uh, it still won't encode cards, uh, this is still a manual process, so although you can actually print an ID badge for someone using the data held in Salto, uh, it is very restricted and you would then still need to uh, either manually capture the ROM code of the card or assign it to the user manually. And then partition um, is the top level, and what this does is this allows the system to be split into different areas which can be managed independently, but objects uh, can still be uh, shared between the different partitions in the system. Uh, there's then two other licenses. Uh, we've got demo and trial. 
Uh, so uh, demo uh, offers full functionality, but, but is quite restricted in the numbers of users and doors that you can configure in the system. Um, we've then got trial, which is fully functional, no limits at all, but it will only run for 90 days. Uh, trial is available. Um, we do have to still order it, but it's available uh, for no cost. Uh, demo, um, there is a small charge for, um, and like I say, it is quite restricted in, uh, in its, uh, its capabilities. Uh, in addition to the four main uh, software versions, uh, there are extra modules available which can add further features uh, or support additional requirements. Um, so many of these features are enhanced uh, versions of what was offered in previous software. Some are new developments though. Um, so one of the big things that AIT will always uh, supply with, uh, with any software version is the database sync because this is the core building block uh, pro for providing system automation and integration um, and it's, it's the way that we get data uh, into the Salto system from other sources. Any of the other uh, components such as graphical mapping, um, you might want to have a, a large screen in an office that shows a floor plan with various doors, that's now available as an, as an add-on. Um, one of the other things that always used to be included is wireless, um, but that's now uh, an add-on module. So if you purchase any wireless hardware, uh, you would need to have, uh, have the wireless software license for that as well. Um, they're not particularly expensive options, some, um, the majority of them. Uh, some of the things like um, custom encryption keys, uh, that, that is a, quite an expensive option. Um, but uh, again, if any of these are interesting to you, then, uh, then give us a call and we can have a chat about those. Uh, so here's just a, a quick uh, grid showing all the functionality available. Uh, there, as you can see, there are quite a lot of options. Um, we're happy to guide you through making the best choice to fit your needs in your organization. Um, but uh, I just thought it would be useful to show you all, all the various options. I've talked about a lot of things, um, and this is what's included in the various software versions. Um, so I'm now going to pull up a live copy of the software running on my laptop so you can just see how it looks. Um, so this is running an Internet Explorer. Um, this is the login screen that we've got here. So I'm just going to log in with no password for now. And we've got our grid in the middle here for managing our various bits and pieces. So what I'll do is I'm going to create an access level here. Um, we'll call it um, webinar access level. I'll give it a quick ID. And then what I can do from here is I can choose the elements that belong to this, uh, this access level. So, so for example, we can add um, our test door. I could then add uh, a zone. So we'll add the webinar zone into the webinar access level. I can choose which users belong to this access level here as well. So I'll put myself in here and then save that. Uh, and it's actually, I, I was a bit skeptical about moving from a, a thick client application to, uh, to, to being web-based, but actually it is really snappy. And although this is just running on my laptop, it's perfectly usable um, when you get it onto a, a much quicker server with a much, you know, much more uh, oomph behind it for, uh, for managing the database than it does. It does fly along quite nicely. Um, I'll just show you uh, the users list here for card holders. So uh, again, this, all the screens look look the same. Um, they've got very similar uh, functionality. Um, we've got some filtering here. So this replaces the old search uh, functionality, and it's all based around wildcards. So I can just type an E, and it will just pull up people's names that contain an E in it. Jump into my user record. And we can see I've got all my personal details up here. I've got the buttons for assigning keys and bits and pieces. Uh, we've got the mobile phone data here. So if we were using the Justin in order to unlock doors, I'd put the phone number in uh, and it would then send a text message asking the user to activate uh, their software and verify who they are. And then again, just down the right hand side here, we've got all the various options that we can configure for this user. If I click on the admin menu up here, I've got my settings. I can change my password if I like. Um, and then I've got all the settings for um, the encoder and bits and pieces. Um, what we're now sort of tending to go towards is, is supplying uh, networked uh, encoders. Um, 
purely because they can be shared by multiple users who have got the um, uh, who have got the web-based software. Um, so rather than sharing a USB device, you can just have one network device, um, and uh, and then it can be used by by multiple people. Um, so, so yeah, just uh, really just to, to sort of give you a, a very quick overview of the software. Um, it, it's quite intuitive. Um, if you're already familiar with the software, uh, uh, it, it, it's actually once you get your head around the ter new terminologies and just finding out where where various options are, uh, it, it's actually really really quite nice to navigate. Um, I do quite like it. I must admit. Um, so uh, that's all from me. Um, obviously, because this is a recorded version, uh, we're not going to have any questions. Um, just a couple of things that, uh, that that we have been asked about um, away from webinars. Um, so uh, about upgrading space uh, from previous uh, software versions. So yes, uh, that is possible. Um, there's no charge for the new software. Um, there might just be a small cost for any additional modules to get the same functionality as you've got in your current version. Um, and then just a charge for the time in actually dealing with the upgrade. But other than that, the software uh, you've already paid for, so you're entitled to, uh, to upgrade to space. Um, we've also been asked in the past about uh, upgrading uh, old handles to support uh, the just-in Bluetooth technology. Um, unfortunately, that's not possible as uh, the, the handles do require replacing because the components of Bluetooth uh, communication, they're all built in and it's, it's not just a kind of an add-on aerial or anything like that that we need to put in. Um, we, we've also uh, had a, a, a panicked phone call in the, in the past about whether uh, the old CU5000 uh, hardware and original lock sets are still available. Uh, yes, they are. Uh, no problem supplying those to match any existing hardware that you've got. Um, so uh, thank you very much if you've sat through uh, this, this recording. Um, I do apologize for, uh, for the problems with screen sharing um, uh, uh, on the actual uh, date of the webinar. Um, if you've got any other questions though and you want to uh, just drop us um, an email uh, or, or get in touch with us then uh, the details are on the screen now. Um, but uh, if you're watching this uh, on Friday um, then I hope you have a great long weekend um, and if you're watching it after the bank holiday then I hope you had a nice long weekend. Um, thanks very much. Uh, my name is Mark Phelan um, but uh, if you've got any questions just uh, just get in touch with us and uh, we'll, uh, we'll do our best to answer it. Thank you very much.